Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. This is Fish from Blog number 17, and I've been doing enough of these for long enough now that the pure white vinegar, vinegar eel cultures I had set up a little while ago now have made it to the front of the rotation. And the first two clips here are those. So these I set up with uh, white vinegar, and then I put in the starter culture, and of course apples in the bottom. And they now seem to be teeming with nematodes, which is great. So it's time to harvest them and see if they produce more or less or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Now these next two clips here are standard cultures I had before, but when I had harvest them, instead of putting in the standard apple cider vinegar, I put I re uh, refilled them with the pure white vinegar, as you can see the arrow saying going to white. And I'm also going to harvest these, and we're going to see how they look. And we'll see if it, again, if it's worth continuing these. So this is the pure white vinegar culture. And I have um, done the usual harvest process, as I did with everything else. And this is the first harvest. This is the number of worms that come out uh, when I first fill up the tall cylinder with uh, tank water. And I wait for them to migrate up. Now the problem is... That was the best one. I obviously took that out, put fresh uh, tank water in. The next one was very, very sparse, and it was like next to nothing. Now, in contrast, when I normally do this with uh, the regular culture style, I can harvest three, four, five times sometimes, depending upon the culture, uh, before it gets to the point where there's nothing really coming up anymore, and I have to reset it all. So it looks like it produces a fair number of worms, but not enough to continue. Like it's, it's not enough in there for it to be worth uh, using that as a process. And also because the reason I started those was to have the contrast between the clear and the worms so I get to see them. Uh, it's not even doing that anymore either. So I am going to discontinue the going to uh, clear vinegar one. I'm going to just, I, when I refilled that, I've refilled it with apple cider vinegar. And then I'm going to keep the white one going for a while longer, just in case it's just a little slower. But I find uh, vinegar eels are slow enough to begin with anyway. Slowing it down even more, uh, it would not make it worthwhile. So I'm already having 10 of these cultures to keep ahead of what I need. So I think that may just be the end of it. The other cultures I've been working an awful lot on lately are the Daphne cultures. Now these guys are greedy little buggers. They can eat more algae uh, than I can grow. I have it growing now in three other tanks, and still they can clean it out in no time at all. I can't seem to ever get any more of a population of them in there. And this one where I try adding the soil, uh, all it did was turn it into <laughs> absorbed a lot of tannins. It's now quite dark, and actually it is, I think, uh, actually no, I know it has fewer Daphne in it. Uh, so this is a bust. This is uh, going to get cleaned out. I have a gentleman who is uh, going to be bringing me some uh, pure culture of Daphne, and I'm going to clean this out, set it up for that, and uh, we're going to grow that side by side, and we'll see how that goes. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to augment feeding algae and now yeast. I'm going to feed them yeast as well and see if I can increase the population. I haven't quite worked out exactly uh, how much yeast to add yet. Uh, this amount here, I'm going to stir this up, get it suspended, wait for it all to dissolve, pour it in the aquarium, and I find that... In a short period of time, like definitely less than a day, they clean this out. It's <laughs> rather impressive how much these guys can eat. Uh, so I will gradually calibrate that. Now, if I want to automate this system, which is something I really wanted to do, uh, obviously I can't do a suspension of yeast because that doesn't work. I will have to find a way of dropping uh, the little pellets in here and a system by which they will actually bounce around enough while they dissolve so they just don't you know go to the bottom and sit there uh, if i can figure that out then i will still be able to automate this but i suspect what's going to end up happening is i'll end up converting the two side tanks uh, to where the fish are going to grow out and these will just pour into those and i'll have to do it manually so we'll see how that goes though i'm going to keep working on this i haven't given up on it yet and we'll see how it goes so like i said the next day it came down and this is it. It's nice and clear. So we'll see if the population goes up in the next couple of weeks, and then uh, that will be a telltale sign. Now, I have been using these cultures to feed my fish. I mean, that's the whole reason for having them. And I 
don't feed heavily because, I, like I said, I want to keep the cultures maintained properly. Uh, but I have been using them, and it actually is one of the easier cultures I have to uh, feed the fish. It is just a simple matter of uh, netting out. You'll see it in the next clip here. Uh, and then just pour it in the tanks. Because I'm maintaining these cultures in a nice, healthy state, and the water is, uh, even though colored, uh, it is actually good, healthy water, uh, I can just pour this straight in the tanks. It's uh, no problem at all. So that's all I do is I just net it out with a nice, fine net. And then I dump it into uh, well the same little containers I've been using all along, and uh, then just pour it into tanks. It's uh, actually really kind of cool, and that's as easy as that is, which is kind of nice. And I do want to get that other tank going too, so I don't have one culture that's uh, doing what I need it to do. I, I like to spread things out as much as possible. So I'm going to show you what this looks like, and then I'm going to pour it in some tanks. So there you go. That's actually a fair amount. I'm actually kind of happy with that. And uh, someone left a comment wondering that if feeding Daphnia will cause uh, issues with your diet issues with your fish and my answer to anybody who wants to feed uh, live food to their fish is just don't feed one live food uh, variety it up uh, that's pretty much the only way you can take care of any kind of issues that you might have with one causing fish to have the runs or one causing fish to have constipation or whatever uh, keep it uh, as varied as you can, uh, run as many cultures as you feel comfortable doing, and as you can see, the fish just love this stuff. It's a re really good um, perky sort of thing to add to an aquarium to keep fish happy. And, I mean, I wouldn't want to eat the same food every day, so uh, this way, like I said, they get a treat, and that's uh, really kind of neat. And one interesting thing about the feeding uh, food like this is... If you want to tell if they're eating it properly, just look at their bellies afterwards. I mean, look at these guppies here. I mean, <laughs> they're fat and they're perky. I mean, that's uh, that's the kind of sign you want to look for. And it keeps them going properly. Like I said, it keeps them going and it adds something into their diet that's missing from feeding, you know, just you know, dried foods and pastes and that sort of stuff. Now, these last couple of clips I want to show you here are my attempt at streamlining the process uh, when it comes to making filters. Now, every filter has a bottleneck. In the case here of undergrowl filters, uh, that's the base plate. It takes a fair amount of time to uh, drill the standpipe hole, which is what I'm setting up here now, and then to drill all the other little holes. So, if I were to make each base plate by itself, it is, uh, well, it takes about 15 minutes to do one, so there's an hour for four. But if I can clamp them all in one place, as I'm doing here now, I can build all four at once, and then that makes it a lot easier. Because I do want to include filters for giveaways and that sort of stuff and to have, of course, enough for what I need. And to do that, I need to actually be able to make multiples at one time. So what I've done here is I took the clamps I made, the brass clamps, and I took the, uh, the height adjusting screw out and the bolt and I replaced them with, uh, well, stainless steel at the moment. Uh, if this turns out to be something I am going to do ongoing, I'll probably make some new brass ones. And then, of course, the backstop, I just cut some plywood for it. I mean, this works very well, and it is more than enough for what I need. Uh, but we'll see you know, if I'm going to make something else for it as well. So there you go. I've just drilled four holes. Uh, they're all nicely centered. And again, they will hold uh, the standpipe perfectly rigid so I can move them around. And it, it is just a little bit better than egg crate. It's just actually a lot better than egg crate. And it's well worth the additional amount of effort to go to. Especially now when I can do uh, four at once instead of just doing two or, you know, actually I think the most I ever did was two. So yeah, doubling that up is great. So now I'm going to do is just go through the pro. I'm not going to show it all to you. I just wanted to show you that initial clip just to show you the setup. And then I'm going to uh, drill a bunch of holes here. And again, it's just very nice to be able to do all of it at once like this. So there you go. That's pretty much today's vlog. And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. And obviously, lots of comments. I really do appreciate them. I am going to keep working on uh, the cultures. I think I'm getting to the point now where I'm uh, quite happy with them. I still feed microworms. I have dialed that back a lot. Mostly because of what I just told you about you know, trying to feed a variety. There's no point in me having 20 cultures of microworms because I, it's just way too much food for what I need anyway. Uh, I did that because well, at the time it was the only culture I was feeding. But now with the Daphnia and the vinegar eels and the microworms, uh, that's actually a, a pretty good variety. And someone suggested me trying uh, blackworms and some other stuff. 
and I do intend on doing that as well. And actually, one other thing I want to work on is uh, we had a well, sorry, we had a past tense unfortunately because my dog passed away. But while she was aging, uh, her dietary system got really quite uh, sensitive. So I had been making an awful lot of dog food for her. And what I've learned from making dog food, actually I want to incorporate into some actual food for uh, fish. A different way of doing it. So that's going to be coming up as well. So there it is. They're all drilled. And uh, <laughs> makes a mess. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.